MrYorkieLoverFitness.com I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Let's talk about a movie called The Room. The Room is known as the best worst film ever made. The Citizen Kane of bad movie. Now, this movie was made in 2003. This guy, Tommy Wiseau, came out of nowhere. He couldn't get an acting job to save his life, so he decided to put up his own money and make a movie. He put up $6 million of his own money and didn't know anything about acting, directing, or anything, but he managed to get this movie made with a small crew and some friends of his. And what's interesting about this movie, they're making, they made a movie about it called The Disaster Artist. And this is about the making of the room and how bad it was, yet it's become a cult classic. They have midnight screenings of this movie. And if you go to their website from right here, that you just go on the website, you can check out that they you know, have screenings, Portland, Los Angeles, New York. And Tommy Wiseau himself shows up at a lot of these screenings in person, does a little uh, pre, uh, interview talk with the fans before the show starts and this thing is pretty much taken on a life of its own it kind of reminds me a modern day rocky horror picture show because when they're playing this movie at these screenings and these screens are like at midnight just like at rocky horror they have all these traditions where they talk back to the camera they bring props and they throw spoons and they do all types of crazy things and this thing is pretty much taken a life of its own on you shouldn't have any secrets from me. I'm your future husband. You sure about that? Maybe I'll change my mind. So what's funny about this movie, The Room, is you can go to The Room website and you see the things that are for sale, which are like the oddest things, just like this movie, because Tommy Wiseau must be like the oddest guy in person. So he sells watches. He sells backpacks. And the best of all, he sells underwear with his name on it. Now I want to find out where did they film this movie. So I was able to find easily the San Francisco locations that they did for exterior shots, but it was harder to find the actual locations for the LA shooting, which was all the interior shooting. Came across this forum and I found this, this right here about this guy that actually had worked on the movie. And so he laid out, you know, where this place was. <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? Now keep in mind, in LA, not only do you have the big main studios, all over Hollywood and Los Angeles, there are tons of small little sound stages where they do photo shoots, interviews, and even small budget movies such as this. So he said in on the forum that it was on the corner of Highland in Santa Monica, right down the street from there, on Highland, a place called Burns and Sawyer. Now Burns and Sawyer, they're no longer there at this address, but Burns and Sawyer, so here it is, 10026 North Highland, where they filmed the room uh, LA locations, which is prim pretty much like 80% of the movie. So Burns and Sawyer used to be at this building and they rented out film equipment. They end up moving to somewhere in North Hollywood. They're still around. Now today, uh, is a company called Levels Audio, and what they do is they do sound post production at this place. Listen, no, me, no, oh boy, no. somebody had better do something around here. What was funny was, you know, in between the, the corner of Highland and Santa Monica is an actual billboard for the movie The Disaster Hours coming out, which which copied the original billboard that was down the street on Highland, Highland and Fountain. Now this is behind. 1026 North Highland in the alleyway. The metal wall was not here when they filmed this movie back in 2003. So this wall was not here. And this right here is actually where they built the majority of the sets, where they actually had the room, this little area right here. Why did you do this? You know better, right? I'm so Why? I'm sorry. I was able to stick my camera over to look over this wall to see and as you're seeing here, this is where they uh, built more green screen. They put up more green screen with walls. And over here to the right is you're going to see where they had the main 
part where they shot the room, right in here, right in that garage looking area. So across the street right here is where they parked their cars and a, a joke in the movie, The Disaster Artist, is they actually built in that little area where, where I just showed you, where I stuck my camera over, they actually built a wall that looked just like this. And there's a funny part in The Disaster Artist where he said, why didn't you just use this wall out here? And Tommy was always saying, hey, because I'm filming a real American big budget Hollywood movie. And here is an aerial view I took with my drone so you could just see the whole, how, how small it is. You see how small this little area is right here where they filmed the interiors. And then, like I said, out through here, they had green screen set up for the rooftop scene and a couple other scenes that they used with the green screen. I used to know a girl. She had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> what a story, Mark. A funny thing about his uh, inexperience of filming this movie is he ended up using two cameras because this is in 2003, uh, HD was just coming in and he didn't know uh, to use you know, a film camera or HD camera. So he actually used both cameras, an HD camera and a film camera side by side to film this whole movie. And he ended up going with the film footage And this wall right here was not there at the time. Right now, this is an art gallery. And what I liked about this shot is you have the whole disaster artist billboard there, and you, you see Santa Monica and Highland. And you see, like I said, the whole area where they shot this, 80% of this movie, right? In here, in here with the green screens, and the parking stuff was right here. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. So one of the mysteries is where did Tommy Wiseau get the $6 million to film this movie? And at first he talked about that he sold leather goods in the U.S. that he imported from Korea. And now the new story is he sold Levi products all over, and that's how he made his money. But when the movie came out, it, it only came out for two weeks. Uh, it had, like I said, a $6 million budget, and it only raked in about $1,600. And he actually paid theater owners to keep it in the theater for two weeks so he could qualify for the Academy Awards. And the, one of the things he did, he put this billboard up. And this billboard was located on Highland, just north of Fountain Street, but on Highland itself. It was only the only billboard. You could call that number at the top and you can get his, uh, uh, Wizzo's voice message and you can leave a message yourself. But he kept this billboard up for five years. This was the only thing promoting the movie. And it's estimated that he was paying about $5,000 a month or so to keep this billboard up of his own money. And the total cost to keep this billboard up for five years was $300,000. Now here is the exact same billboard where the room used to be. And this is, this is modern day. That picture I just showed you was back in 2003. This is 2017, earlier this year, and you see it says Young Pope by HBO's up there, and there's probably something different now. This is what it looks like now, so you get an idea of where this billboard was placed. It's a pretty prominent place in Hollywood. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. The room basically had two different locations for shooting. One for interior, which mostly took place in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, to be specific. And the second location, which took care of all the exterior shots, were in San Francisco. Right here is a map of all the main spots that they shot at in San Francisco. I'll put a link in the description. So the first place was the Grace Cathedral, where we first see our character, Johnny, riding a cable car. Then they used the Golden Gate Bridge shot, which they used throughout the movie. Same with Palace of the Fine Arts and then the house exterior. So this was the house exterior, and as you can see from this list, like this has the apartment, coffee shop, flower shop, jogging stairs. Uh, so the apartment, the house exterior, is located right here. And the house interior was obviously on that uh, sound stage in Hollywood. Now the flower shop, which is located, this is the flower shop right here, and is no longer a flower shop, it's actually been turned into a uh, cafe, which is called Cafe Sophie, which uh, is pretty much like a coffee shop with sandwiches. And that's still there today. You can go check that out. 
And then the infamous scenes at the Golden Gate Park where they're, you know, playing around, throwing the football. And that's all through right here. Then there was the jogging stairs where they're talking, jogging. And you can find the jogging stairs right here. And like I said, if you ever want to take a trip up to San Francisco and had like a mission to go check out all the uh, San Francisco room locations, uh, this map will help you out big time. You're scaring me. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. I recommend you check out this movie, The Room, because it literally is so bad it's good. And the more you watch it, the more you'll like it, the more you'll find things that you didn't see before, no matter how many times you've seen it. And just think, this movie inspired this book that was written by Greg Sestero, you know, the guy that plays the best friend in the movie, that has now inspired this movie coming out with James Franco, Dave Franco, and Seth Rogen that will hit the theaters, uh, I believe, December 1st for limited release and then December 8th for nationwide relief. And it looks like it's going to be a real good film. But uh, like I said, if, before this movie comes out, I recommend you catch up on this movie, the original itself. You can get it off Amazon, uh, eBay. It's like it's like ten bucks. It's like eight to ten dollars. You want the Blu-ray? It's like fifteen bucks. Trust me, you will not regret it. Ah! <laughs>